Hi, how's it going? Here's the triangle that we had from the last session. Um, and it's looking good. It's great. But <clears throat> we're not going to get very far with our AAA browser experience if we um, hard code all the data into our shader. That's not so good. So today we're going to make exactly the same triangle, but it's going to be allocated from a buffer vertex buffer. We're going to control it on the CPU side. Um, just a side note before we go on, it's a great idea every time just to control shift I into the console, check if we get any warnings because the web GPU spec is changing so quickly. I just found two warnings here. It's saying, hey, um, this stage vertex in the shaders, it's fine, but we're going to deprecate it. So instead, we should just write vertex. Okay. No worries, that's something we can fix straight away. So we'll just sort of open this up and get to it. So where are we? In the shaders, here we are. Just fix that. And we'll do the same thing with fragment. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. The code gets a bit cleaner. Uh, go terminal. Build that. That's fine. Look, honestly, I'm not so worried about the mode because it has a default. I am more worried about when um, the web GPU spec changes and the code breaks. Okay, so control shift I to the console. There are no warnings. That's awesome. Okay, cool. So we'll get into the, the stuff for today. So if we look at the main file here, we've got a whole bunch of things and if I was to create a mesh and put it in here the code would get quite big so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a separate class to handle my triangle mesh now the way I like to do things when I'm making simple game engines is I have the um, engine and then I have the assets so I have the materials that's the textures and the meshes, that's the, um, you know, vertex buffers. And, and those are my two things that my, that I outsource to classes. So, um, make a new file and we'll call this triangle mesh TypeScript file. Um, and we're going to make a class. There we have it. But what I want to do is I want to import it. So, just like I was doing in a previous video in this series where I was going through this, I'm going to export this. I'm going to, on this side, triangle mesh. Okay. Good. So, <laughs> maybe about here, I'll say, okay. Um, make a new triangle mesh. Okay. So, what do we need? Well, there's sort of two things that we need. Um, one is we need the vertex buffer. That's basically the handle to the vertex memory. So we're gonna, we're going to allocate space for a certain number of vertices. We're gonna push those vertices onto the GPU. And then what we get is sort of a resource handle. So it's a 64-bit reference to the underlying memory space in the GPU where that stuff is stored. Um, the type here, but we're gonna need something else because if we just use that, then all we're doing is throwing a whole bunch of numbers at the GPU, but our shaders need to understand what those numbers mean, how to extract the attributes from that. So we're also gonna have a buffer layout and that data type is a vertex buffer layout. Okay, cool. So now let's get to the constructor for the class. So this is called every time the class is instantiated. Side note, if I'm going through things which are super basic, um, just, and it's annoying, just feel free to let me know. It's, uh, I just have paranoia that I'm going too quickly through some things. So I have a tendency to Repeat topics, which is, it's important, that's important. Okay, so 
um, just like if we were doing this in um, OpenGL, we would have a list of the vertices that we want to sort of push on. Um, so we'll make a float 32 array. And here we're going to construct it. And again, we'll go X, Y, R, G, B. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to straight up type this. Because there's nothing too exciting there. We're just, you know, it's, I'm literally copy pasting the same data that I had in my shader, right? <laughs> It's the same data, it's just laid out all together in one um, array. Yeah, now this is complaining that buffer hasn't been allocated. Yeah, that's fine, we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so um, there's a few things that we need to sort of go through. Another thing that we need is we need to sort of define how this buffer will be used. So the data type here is uh, GPU usage flags and the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to use this as a, a vertex which means that um, it will be visible to the vertex buffer uh, sorry <laughs> visible to the vertex shader okay it can be used as a vertex buffer you know what I mean um, <clears throat> and then there right, we go copy destination so I can copy data to it which is important because that's what I want to do I want to copy this vertices data into my buffer after the buffer is created okay I'm then going to create a buffer descriptor which I, it's just a little struct that has um, information which will be used by the um, buffer in order to create things. Sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, it'll be used when the buffer is created, this will be passed in and the arguments here will be used by the device to create the buffer. So um, we need to know the size, the number of bytes we're going to allocate. And to get that, we go vertices, um, byte length, then we need to know how the buffer will be used. And we need to know, oh, I'm going to set this option as well. Now, this is a bit of a weird option. This option here is equivalent to um, Vulkan's host memory. Uh, sorry, host visible. So some memory spaces are available to the CPU. And we can do them, we can talk to them with regular... Um, memory operations from our TypeScript and some memory spaces are only native to the device. So there's some, there's some stuff in the device which is really high speed which we can't talk to. In future, I might do this, in future if we want to send this buffer to the local memory device then we sort of send it to a host visible, like a CPU visible buffer, and then we tell that buffer to blit its memory onto the um, GPU memory, which we can't directly talk to, but can kind of indirectly talk to. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually create the buffer. And the thing is, to create the buffer, we need a GPU device. So actually, We'll take this in here, we'll take a device. And um, of course, we'll have to go back here and we'll have to pass in our device. And that's fine. And the reason for this is we use the device to allocate the buffer. So we go um, create buffer. And then it says we need to put in a GPU buffer descriptor. We've got that here. Oh, of course, of course, it needs to be this buffer. Okay, awesome. So now I've created the buffer, we need to copy that memory over. It's actually not too hard. So what we do is a little, this one weird trick. Uh, 
Okay, so what we do is we get uh, we we call get mapped range on this buffer, and what this does is it returns um, an array buffer with the contents of GPU buffer, but it's something that we can write to. Um, and we have some other optional options here. We can um, get uh, number, the size, uh, sorry, the offset, <laughs> the offset, uh, so where we want to start writing the memory to, if we want to write to a certain position on a buffer, um, and a size, so how much memory we want to map from that position. But by default, it offset will be zero, and by default, the size will be the whole buffer. So this would be really useful if we had a massive level and we just have a single buffer which holds everything in our level. And we just want to map to certain bits because we want to write certain bits of the buffer. That could be useful, but um, for now we'll just go with this. Anyway, then what we do is we set this to our vertices. So we send that in. Okay, cool. And then it's best practice to also um, unmap the buffer. That just lets it go about its thing without being, you know, without being host visible at this current point. Okay, so now we need to define the buffer layout. It's actually quite simple, though it's a little weird. Okay. And this is what I was saying about, like, let me know if I'm going over the same basic OpenGL stuff. Um, just let me know. So, uh, we have a few things. We have to define an array stride. <clears throat> an array stride is a number of bytes that we need to step to get from one vertex to the next vertex. So this is vertex 1. To get to vertex 2, we'll need to step through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five 32-bit numbers, which is... 20 bytes of memory we need to step through to get to the next one. Um, and then we're looking at the attributes. Now there are two attributes. There's the color and the position. Sorry, position and color. So we'll start with uh, position. Position has, we'll call it shader location zero because it's attribute location zero. Um, the format of that is float 32 and there are two of them x y two at uh, two things within that attribute okay and the offset the offset is zero because the first position starts at position zero in our um in our buffer Okay, so then we have the next attribute, which is the color. The color is shader location one. Its format is three numbers, 32-bit floats. The offset is eight because the first position, sorry, the first color starts two numbers into the buffer. Two numbers is eight bytes. So there's an offset of eight. Okay, so there we have it. Cool. Now let's go back and use this. So we'll go back to main. And in the main, we have created our, our mesh, our triangle mesh. We need to, okay, so we have bind group layouts and all that. We're gonna leave that. So bind group layouts are more for uniforms. Um, the, the vertex buffer is sort of programmed into the pipeline. So we have, where are we? We have entry point, vertex shader main, and then we have buffers. Now this is a list. So what we do is we go triangle mesh buffer layout, and that's our list. Okay, just double checking everything. That's looking good. That's looking good. So the last thing we need to do is we need to, um, before we go to draw, we need to pass this in. So we need to say, um, uh, render pass, set vertex buffer, and we're gonna put this into slot number zero, and we're gonna put um, our triangle mesh. Okay, 
Now let's see if this works. I know you're thinking, hey, well, oh, of course it's not going to work. We haven't updated the shaders. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. But um, anyway, what, what I was going to say is when we set this into slot zero, that takes these attributes and they come in. They come in just fine. I don't need to set slot zero, slot one. Reason for that being I'm accessing multiple attributes within the same buffer. So I just pass the buffer in once, it gets parsed, and that data comes in. Okay, so the shaders. Things get a little simplified here. So just looking here again, um, we have this fragment structure. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, now we can get rid of this pre-baked stuff. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to get rid of all of this. So we're going to say, okay, um, at location number zero, we have our vertex position, and that is this one, float 32 vec 2. Okay, that's looking good. So what we'll do is then we'll go back into the code down here and we'll say, okay, take the X, Y position, set zero as a Z, one as a W. Okay, that's fine. Take the RGB color and append one for the alpha. And then there you've got your color. And this fragment shader will, that's fine. It can work with this structure. So fingers crossed, this should be working. Let's find out if it's not. Well, it compiled, rather transpiled. Okay, we'll take that, open it up. Huh, that's not great. What have we got here? Oh yeah, this, <laughs> this should be location, not loction. Like I said, it's winter here at the moment. My hands are cold typing yeah all right let's try that again now it's working and we'll just check the console because that's important yep no errors that is good and yeah there we have it so now we have our programmable thing and it might look a little weird because it's the same as before but if we go if we go in here to the triangle mesh and we change some data so let's say I want the tip of my triangle to be off on the side and I want it to be white. Then yeah, that it, it works. It does what I say. So yeah, that's that. Now I am starting to notice that it is probably a good idea to abstract this renderer to its own class with a proper like constructor and destructor and everything because this um, buffer is allocating space and we should have a function to destroy that I mean ideally we should and I just I'm, I'm aware of the technical debt which is accumulating here so I'm just gonna defer that to maybe next vi the next video but um yeah no that'll be it for now I um, hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again soon bye